everyone. It's Mrs. Brenneman here. I'm back once more. Um, today I'm going to read chapter 17, which is our last chapter in our novel, Number of the Stars. Um, and chapter 17 is titled, All This Long Time. So sit back, enjoy, and let's finish our story. The war would end. Uncle Henrik had said that. It was true. The war ended almost two long years after. Amory was 12. Church bells rang all over Copenhagen early that May evening. The Danish flag was raised everywhere. People stood in the streets and wept as they sang the national anthem of Denmark. Amory stood on the balcony of the apartment with her parents and sister and watched. Up and down the street and across on the other side, she could see flags and banners almost in almost every window. She knew that many of those apartments were empty. For two long years now, neighbors had tended the plants and dusted the furniture and polished the candlesticks for the Jews who had fled. Her mother had done so for the Rosens. It is what friends do, Mama had said. Now, neighbors had entered each unoccupied waiting apartment, opened a window, and hung a symbol of freedom there. This evening, Mrs. Johansson's face was wet with tears. Kirsty was waving a small flag, sang her sang her blue eyes were bright. Even Kirsty was growing up. No longer was she a light-hearted ha chatterbox of a child. Now she was taller, more serious, and very thin. She looked like the pictures of Lise at seven in the old album. Peter Nelson was dead. It was a painful fact to recall on this day when there was so much joy in Denmark, but Anne-Marie forced herself to think of her red-headed almost brother and how devastating the day was when they received the news that Peter had been captured and executed by the Germans in the public square of Rivingen in Copenhagen. He had written a letter to them from prison the night before he was shot. It had said simply that he loved them and that he was not afraid and that he was proud to have done what he could for his country and for the sake of all free people. He had asked in the letter to be buried beside Lise, but even that was not to be for Peter. The Nazis refused to return the bodies of the young men they shot at Ravengen. They simply buried them there where they were killed and marked the graves only with numbers. Later, Anne-Marie had gone to the place with her parents and they had laid flowers there on the bleak numbered ground. That night, Anne-Marie's parents told her the truth about Lise's death at the beginning of the war. She was part of the, resi the resistance too, Papa explained, part of the group that fought for our country in whatever ways that they could. We didn't know, Mama added. She didn't tell us. Peter told us after she died. Oh, Papa, Anne-Marie cried. Mama, they didn't shoot Lise, like, did they? The way they did with Peter in the public square with people watching? She didn't, w she wanted to know, wanted to know it all, but, but wasn't certain if she could bear the knowledge. But Papa shook his head. She was with Peter and the others in the cellar where they held secret meetings to make plans. Somehow the Nazis found out and they raided the place that evening. They all ran different ways trying to escape. Some of them were shot, Mama told her sadly. Peter was shot in the arm. Do you remember that, that Peter's arm was bandaged and in a sling at Lisa's funeral? He wore a coat over it so no one would notice and a hat to hide his red hair. The Nazis were looking for him. Amory didn't remember. She hadn't noticed. The whole day had been a blur of grief. But what about Lise? She asked. If she wasn't shot, what happened? From the military car, they saw her running and simply ran her down. So it was true what you said, that she was hit by a car. It was true, Papa told her. They were all so young, Mama said, shaking her head. She blinked, closed her eyes for a moment and took a long, deep breath. So very, very young with so much hope. Now, remembering Lise, Amory looked from the balcony down into the street. She saw that below, amid the music, singing, and the sound of the church bells, people were dancing. It brought back another memory, the memory of Lise so long ago, wearing the yellow dress, dancing with Peter on the night that they announced their engagement. She turned and went to her bedroom, where the blue trunk still stood in the corner as it had all these years. Opening it, Amory saw that the yellow dress had begun to fade, it was discolored at the edges where it had lain so long in folds. Carefully, she spread open the skirt of the dress and found the place where Ellen's necklace had laid, hidden in the pocket. 
The little star David still gleamed gold. Papa, she said, returning to the balcony. Her father was standing with others watching the, re the rejoicing crowd. She opened her hand and showed the him the necklace. Can you fix this? I have kept it all this long time. It was Ellen's. Her father took it from her and examined the broken clasp. Yes, he said, I can fix it. When the Rosens come home, you can give it back to Ellen. Until then, Amory told him, I will wear it myself. And that is the end of our book, Number the Stars. I hope you've enjoyed the story as much as I have. Um, I hope you get to get out and enjoy the nice weather. And I will see you tomorrow for one last little piece of information that the author would like to share with us. And it gives us a little bit of information about where um, they got their information for reading or er, for writing the book. So until then, I will see you tomorrow. Take care. See you guys.